public schools are full of lies. Funky racist shit like Columbus discovered America when there are already people living here. <laughs> Capitalist brainwashing. Like Farmer Jones went to town to sell some apples. How much profit did he make? Profit! That's brainwashing. You could live that kind of life. Oh, work for IBM, miles and miles of corridors. Do a plastic heart. I did that. I was in dermatological, so I sold drugs, not, not Leary's, straight, straight drugs, dermatological. <laughs> and I'd go around my duties where, you know, I drove a Chevrolet with Ford the Wars, mowed the lawn, lived in the suburbs, lived that kind of life. It's something, you know? And, you know, my duties were I'd, I'd go around to all these doctors and get them to write articles saying what good drugs these were and pay them, slip them about $500. I'd take the articles, I'd print them off, and I'd show them to other doctors saying, hey, look how good this shit is. And you start engaging in this, you start wondering, is this shit any good? <laughs> I found some figures on this drug, and uh, it costs like 0. 0.6 cents to make, and they're selling it for $3. Now, like I said, I start wondering, is this shit any good? Who are you going to ask? You can't find the Dalai Lama, so go to my boss, the regional sales manager, and say, hey, just between me and you, is this shit any good? He says, well, it can't kill you. <laughs> now, I'm working four hours a week for this company. The rest of the time I play for SNCC, 80, to 80 hours a week. I run around the South, get up to Massachusetts, and... That's not considered work, but I'm getting $15,000 a, a year for four hours a week work. Pretty soon they catch me and sort of let them that four hours was rotting, rotting my brain, producing chromosome damage. So I gotta get out of here. So I get a place in the Lower East Side. The only person in the building speaks English, $23 a month rent. Rats all over the place. People selling, food, scraping the gutters for food, food, mm -hmm. selling everything they had. Some Sundays I'd go on the Avenue D and see people sitting in a cardboard selling things they got in their kitchen. And you don't feel it uh, until the rats start eating at you. It's a feeling you don't have when you're doing a children's crusade in Mississippi. It's different. I've been accused of damaging the image of the country. I'm damaging the image of the country. I mean, a million people were killed in Vietnam. Isn't that damaging the image of the country? What do you think the lie was? Goddamn Coney Island trip? <laughs> I mean, you want to... We, we came to Chicago in 68. Convention. National, Democratic National Convention. Convention Center, 10 miles away. 10 miles of barbed wire fence. 25,000 troops, including cops, and National Guard, tanks, armored tanks in the streets of Chicago, helicopters with machine guns. And they say, we're here to disrupt the convention. Out of sight, we couldn't even find a way out of the park. <laughs> you ever want to go on trial, there's no place you can pick better than Chicago. They give you a real good deal there. They kick the shit out of you, throw you in jail, and give you right down home trial. They had a judge here, his name was Julie, my old dude, old man. I mean, man was he old. Just missed the Titanic, he was here for the first Vulcan War. Couldn't <laughs> come either. He's a Geritol freak. So, so much goddamn Geritol, Ted Mack showed up. He an audition him to be a judge. <laughs> man, you, you, would, you ain't seen a judge, you've seen Julie. He ran a tight ship. He made a ruling every ten minutes. We want to put... A uh, witness on the stand, the former Attorney General Ramsey Clark, and the prosecutor says, uh, we object to the appearance of this witness because it will definitely tend to prejudice the jury in favor of the defendants. Well, I always thought that's what you did a, a defense for. <laughs> but Julie knew what he was talking about, so he stuck around. Yeah, he, I, I got to hand it to him. Uh, he didn't... Uh, he held on for the whole trip. I mean, their whole defense was geared around giving the judge a heart attack. <laughs> it's, the only, it's the only trial where the defendants didn't know whether it was innocent or guilty. Jury's still out on that one. Man, was that some money to play to. The 
It looked like the back page of the Woman's Home Journal. I get up on the stand, the guy asked me, have you ever written any books? I said, yeah, I wrote a book. I wrote a book called, called Fuck the System. I looked over to the jury, they're shaking their hands like windmills. That morning on the spot, no shit. They rushed me to the hospital, instant pneumonia. I got 28 days for smiling, 14 days for laughing, and two days for throwing a kiss to the jury. Well, we were going to put out an album called the Government's Case Against the Conspiracy, the Complete Record. You open an album, there's no record. <laughs> <laughs> we went down to the Library of Congress, one of the sketches were there, and we go up to him and say, hey, can we have one of the sketches, you know, those guys who make the sketches for the TV, and we say, can we have one of the sketches? He says, no, the copyrights owned by the Library of Congress. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, I gotta talk to my manager. I mean, the government puts you on trial and they own the rights, too. <laughs> mm. Now, in this state, you get 20 years for selling dope to a minor, but you only get 10, 5 to 10 for, for manslaughter. So the trick is, if you sell them to a kid and the cops show up, shoot the kid real fast. <laughs> Until I met climate nitrous oxide, I was a grim motherfucker. <laughs> All around me I saw gloom. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? Every time a baby was born, I saw overpopulation. Every time a guy pissed his pants, I saw pollution. I mean, I saw a lot of bummers, man. Then I met nit nitrous oxide, and it's been giggles ever since. <laughs> they say Jesus made it up there in three days. If he had acid, he'd make it up in one. But he did the best he could. <laughs> well, I've been sent down here to head up a new religion, a religion called Fuck It. <laughs> then, are there any subscribing members? <laughs> up against it and things don't seem to be going your way. There are only two things you can say. Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! You don't know what things are going your way and you just don't know how to crawl up from under it so you just gotta say those two little words. Fuck it! What are they? Fuck it! And it seems to work. <laughs> well, there are any non-believers here, please. Please, try to consider the idea. <laughs> if things aren't quite going your way, there's a salvage there. Just say fuck it and go on. Carry on with what you've got. And I mean, we, we used to do the guerrilla theater in Lower East Side and throw money away from Mercantile Exchange. Yeah. We had a, we had a uh, press conference introducing a new drug called Lace. It's a combination of DMSO and LSD. When you squirt it on people, they get all aroused and <laughs> promote sexual behavior. <laughs> and these guys uh, took the whole nine yards. I wish I could have stick, stuck around for the orgy. But it's hard right now. It's, we're living in a paranoid, paranoid society right now. It's hard to really pamphlet and approach people. And, you have to be more visual at first and unobtrusive and get your point, get people to notice, then maybe hand them something, get a little closer with them. But it's really hard to really get our points across when we're demonstrating, but uh, that's what we're all here for, right? We're here to celebrate the anniversary of the Woodstock Music and Art Fair, yeah. 1969. <laughs> My participation in is somewhat skewed. All I seem to be known for is getting kicked off the stage by Pete Townsend and trying to free John Sinclair. But I know I couldn't do that single-handedly. But I brought the printing press. I pamphleted the entire area. There's not one representation. I set up help tents. There is not one representation of the enormity of that population in that festival. And that's what has to happen here. The 
the mythology around an event like this has to loom larger than the reality. Whatever happens here has to be bigger on the outside than it is on the inside. And there's no way to represent what you all are going to experience this weekend. And as I say, I am from Muskogee, Oklahoma. We're all from it, but we all done left because they don't smoke marijuana in Muskogee. They don't take no trips on LSD. We left, motherfuckers! And if you don't like what's going on here, you can leave it or change it. Yippee!